Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, your YouTube shop teacher, and finally the weather has warmed up and I'm back in the shop and I'm starting to make videos with the little 7 inch South Bend shaper that was given to me by Ron Cox. So just this morning I decided, well, I'm going to start uh, just doing some basic videos uh, on cutting, but I immediately ran into a problem. And the problem is this. I set the stroke for exactly two inches, which is what I need for this little jaw project, and it worked just fine. Turn the machine off, start it back up, and the stroke length has changed typically to around four inches. I went through this process I don't know how many times, and it constantly slips no matter how tight I make the adjustment nut. So let's take a look into the gearbox, the crank box. I haven't been through all the steps yet as to how to make adjustments on the machine, but to change the length of the stroke, one needs to take off the access, get a good light. Now I just got that light from, uh, from Banggood. It's really bright, except the magnet on it is worthless. So I've had this apart several times already, each time tightening it and thinking that it would be tight enough. It works for a while, then it fails. This is the little square wrench that they gave us. And there's no leverage here at all. Of course, you got about a 4-inch handle. So, I've been using a 14-inch Craftsman wrench, and that still doesn't get it tightened up. At some point, that slips. So this is the crank mechanism, as you can see, if I can zoom in on it. So the first thing I will do is to unplug the machine so I can work on it safely. So there's a clamping mechanism here, and that is what appears to be failing. So let's take it out real quick. We'll start by loosening. And since I've had it out several times, it's pretty easy to do on the tenth time. And there are some of the parts I know already that I can leave this other part in place. Now we'll go down into the basement shop to the workbench and examine this. I've already determined what is wrong and I have to make a new piece. Well, maybe I'll order it from South Bend. Oh, that's right, they went out of business 25 years ago. Maybe Grizzly has that part. What's the chances? Fortunately, Ron had the original drawings here, and the original manual, and here are the parts. So part 124 is the nut, and uh, the prices are listed here. That would be $1.20. Part 125, the rocker arm shoe, that's made of bronze, that's a doll, or that's three dollars and forty cents, and part 126, which is what I'm going to have to make, is ninety cents. Oh, and by the way, that wrench was a dollar ninety-five. So here's how this works. Now this is not the correct bolt, I'm just using it to illustrate. Goes through there, and once you get the machine into the position where it's the right length stroke, you tighten this down. And there's nothing wrong with this. Now this bronze piece, bronze piece is really nicely made with little oil holes and a Gitz oiler on the top. And although it shows wear, I don't believe that there's any real problem with it. It is a three-quarter inch hole. And this is a piece of three-quarter inch round just to double check. And there's very little wear, just a little bit. So I'm declaring this piece okay, and I'm glad of it because that would be a lot harder to make than the other one. So this is the piece that I'm going to make, and what is wrong with it, you say? And it took me two hours to figure it out. But you can see right here that it is worn compared to the other side. So right here where the wear is, I'm down to about 75 thousandths, whereas it should be 90, about 90 thousandths or so. 
92. So I believe it's cocking a little bit as it's being tightened up. So that's what I'm going to make. Uh, not a real difficult piece. You can see right there also. But yet it's something that's going to take an hour or two. Now it is soft. Which is good. Then I don't have to harden that. I'm just going to use some mild steel. And although you would think this would be 750 thousandths, it's 746. So I don't know if there's that much wear on it or if it was designed. Because you think the wear would be in the bronze rather than the steel. But this is today's project. This is one inch diameter, so here's a piece of one inch stock. I'm not sure what it is, but it's not just mild steel. It came from Caterpillar, so I hope it's not too tough to turn, but we'll see. If it is, I'll switch to some other stock. And it's a half inch hole, so, and this is turned down to what I just told you. And it'll be cut off and milled right here. So watch the order of operations. I will start by putting the work in the lathe, facing it, turning it, boring it, reaming it, and then turning this diameter. All while it's held in a three-jaw chuck without taking it out. Let's go on over to the closing lathe. Alright, let's get started by facing. Next I will turn to diameter here and the diameter is 0 0.750 and the length is 0 0.712. I'll make it a little longer than the 0 0.712 and face it to length later on. That gives me a little bit of latitude. thousands to go and I'll slow down the feed for that. And if the shoe fits, wear it. And now just a little bit of an undercut to square off that shoulder. And now the hole, I'll start off by spotting it. And drill it quarter inch, about an inch and a half deep. I like to have it extra deep. And 31 sixty-fourths. And now ream one half inch at slow speed, and I probably don't even need to ream. Drilling half inch probably would have been okay. I'm probably working to a closer tolerance here than what I need, but now I'm using the depth mic right here up 
to the shoulder and my dimension is 7 15 meaning I have three thousands to take off so looking down here at the edge technology carriage indicator and it's already up against the carriage and I have zeroed it out and I need to take three thousands off so I'm going to advance the carriage three thousands and it doesn't matter about backlash I can go back and forth here until I get it and then I'll take my cut and I'll take the last facing pass now I'll break that corner with a file and countersink just a little bit there to remove any burr from when I uh, reamed and uh, give a little clearance there so that's done and I am ready to cut off and now I'm parting off and of course as it is my want to do always cutting a little longer so that I can face this to the exact length later on again possibly working to a closer tolerance than I need <laughs> Now I'm going to face the piece to uh, 203 thousandths or thereabouts and I'm going to use the edge technology carriage indicator to help me get that dimension. Perhaps from this view you can see both the cutting tool and the indicator and their is 20 thousandths to take off so I will move the carriage 20 thousandths and lock it right there I'm not sure if there's a reflection there and I'm ready to cut And the last step is to mill to 738 that dimension and I have to determine the depth and I think I'll hold that in a square collet block and that's a milling machine project. I'm over at the Bridgeport mill and with the work held in a square collet block in this manner I'm going to proceed to mill on each side and I went out to the garage and I measured the slot using a uh, adjustable <laughs> adjustable parallel. Okay, and the dimension this way is 780 thousandths and it's 115 thousandths deep. Now the game plan here is to uh, touch off and get the depth that's simple enough and then I will touch off on the side and take some trial cuts and then I plan on milling the one side and then turning the work around like this rather than going around and milling in the back where I can't see what I'm doing and I think that by splitting the difference and everything I get it centered just right and right on dimension so let's get started touch off and lock the quill raise the table 115 thousandths I have zeroed out the knee collar and looking at it from this direction I'm going to touch off without the spindle revolving and this will be close enough 
right there and I'll take an initial cut of 20 thousandths and I'm looking at the digital readout in the Y axis. Notice that I have rotated the work or I should say the entire collet block and I'll take a cut now on the other side. I gotta emphasize there'd be hundreds of ways of doing this. Perhaps you have a better way. But now I can take a measurement and determine how much I have to take off of each side and I won't show all of that. I am now at come on and focus anyway it's 802 thousandths so I have uh, 22 thousandths to take off and I've already moved it in half of that which is 11 That's side one. Okay, I think I'm down to dimension. Yeah, I'm right on. So I'll take it out. But by the way, I noticed that on the original piece, not only was it all torn up, but these ears here, if you want to call them ears, are bent on both sides. So that also was part of the problem. There's the old, there's the new. I hope it fits. And I did a lot of measuring, so, so it should. I, this is what I used to, to get that final dimension. Now, I took... The, I went back out to the shaper and I took this piece off. Notice that it, it's a dovetail and it goes like this. I got a bit of a burr on that thread. I do have some deburring to do and then like that and then the nut. So when I go back out to the shaper, I have some filing to do because there, on the yoke or whatever we call that part, I've forgotten already, there are some burrs on there and some galling. So i got to take that off and then fit this up, lubricate it real well, lock it down. I won't show all of that because I'll be working inside of a hole. Okay, let's see if we can get this together. And I set it for a two inch stroke. Time for the acid test. Notice that I tightened it down with the South Bend wrench rather than my 18 inch Craftsman. So we'll see if it holds. It had a very good feel as I tightened it compared to the way it used to be. There is some damage there to other parts or I should say wear because this is a 70 year old machine. Let's crank it up. Remember it's set for a seven inch, uh, a two inch stroke.
It seems to be holding, but only time will tell. But now I can continue on the other video that I started to make four days ago. Well, there we are. It was a three or four day video, <laughs> three or four days in the making, and quite a long one, too long. I hope I cut it back enough so it's tolerable, but I think I got this old girl running and I'm sure that as I use it, there'll be other issues as there is with older machinery. But hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed doing the machining. So this might give you some ideas on how to make setups and do things in your shop for other applications. It's highly unlikely anybody would be doing this exact job. But at any rate, this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.